The minutes of the Fed's July meeting are out today. Let's talk about it now with David Bonson. Uh, so, David, I think this is an important minutes report. Uh, even though there was no rate hike in July, we did have the Fed say that the balance sheet unwinding process would start, quote, relatively soon. They introduced this language in the July statement. So what kind of details might we get about the balance sheet today? Um, we may get a little more clarity as to whether or not they mean Q4 or Q1. Um, so there may be some timing specificity as to when their first actions take place. And then we do need more clarity as to what those actions will be. I'm definitely in the camp that believes it's going to be very slow pace. Mm. And it's not going to amount to any real tightening. It just simply amounts to allowing some parts of their balance sheet, longer dated securities when they mature, to roll off as opposed to something more proactive. But it is quantitative tightening, essentially. Um, there are people that would call it that. I'm not in that camp, though, Scott. I think that mm. it is tightening relative to what they've been doing. So it's tighter. But tightening would involve actually reducing, and this is not an aggressive action of reducing. It is more just allowing uh, a maturity of a security. So it has the effect of tightening monetary policy, but it is not what we would consider a very active, aggressive form of tightening. What about the debt ceiling debate? Do we get any information on that? Because that deadline is at the end of September. It's yeah. coming up. And, and this is more of a political issue rather than a central bank issue, just in terms of the decisions right. around it. So how does the Fed navigate that? You remember that old uh, Who song, Won't Get Fooled Again? Mm. Um, I won't get fooled for the eighth, ninth, tenth time either. This debt ceiling thing has supposedly been a factor that would be a catalyst to monetary decision making, let alone market disruptor. So many times in the last eight years, I think that the Fed it will assume rightly that one way or the other, without us knowing exactly how and when, Congress punts, goes through it, the debt ceiling will not drive their decision making. And we've gone two minutes without even addressing interest rates. So does yeah. the Fed raise interest rates one more time this year in your view? Um, so my, my belief on this is that they will do exactly what they telegraph to markets. I don't think they're ready to actually surprise markets. So that would be one more. So as of now, they have priced into the Fed futures market one more increase, and even the odds of that have come down quite a bit. Mm. They're still indicating a greater likelihood of it happening than not happening at the December meeting. Mm. Earlier than that appears in the Fed futures to be off the table. But if they don't go one more time this year, I mean, they could miss a pretty important window. Remember mm. back to 2015 when they went in December, their next hike was one year after because they got rocked by global volatility. So wouldn't it be irresponsible for the Fed to not keep their forecast and go one more time this year? Um, you might be asking the wrong guy because I think it was irresponsible for them not to have gone in 2013 and yes, again in 14, et cetera. But what I would add is in 2016, when they waited a whole year to go, I'm not being conspiratorial here. I'm making just an obvious point. It was an election year in U.S. So that, that played in to some degree. Global volatility was significantly more elevated. We're in a more of a reflationary or mild reflationary environment now versus what was threat of recessionary in 2016. So I don't think they have to fear that they punt a full year. But I think it's a valid point. It could happen. Ultimately, if they don't go, I think markets need to be more concerned. What are they seeing that's holding them back? So you're calling the Fed political. That's something I've never heard before. Yeah, right. <laughs> David Bonson, thank you so much. Good to see you, Scott.